Hey, what's up? This is Kay Roosevelt, and you're watching Stash TV. Mr. Roosevelt, tell me about the first song you ever wrote. Oh, man. The first, <laughs> I gotta remember back to that. The first song I ever wrote, to be honest, I don't really remember exactly what it was, uh -huh. but um, I'm sure it was me making beats at my dad's house. I probably, I think I had just gotten Logic, was, which is the program I make beats on. Uh -huh. And you can like, you know, make your beats, but you can also record on it. So I was like, man, let me just try to write a little hook or something to one of these beats I made. So I did it and it was, I'm sure it was awful, but. <laughs> I mean, it seems like everybody that ends up being a producer or writing songs, they always had the aha moment when they realized, yeah. you know, I'm pretty good at this. I could probably make some money off of this. What, what moment was that for you? Um. I think the moment for me was when when I started to like it, you know, because I'm pretty like critical of my own stuff more than anybody really like, you know, judges my stuff. So when I'm like, man, like the stuff kind of sounds good, I'd listen to this. Like that was my aha moment. Like, man, maybe this is something I could go for. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's, let's start at the beginning. Talk to me a little bit about you know growing up out here in California and the musical influences and things that really got you into. Um, Want to be a musician? Yeah, well, um, like you said, I grew up out here in LA. Um, my dad's a musician. I have like kind of a musical family in general. Like my aunts and stuff are like music teachers. And but my dad, he's like a, for, you know, he makes a living doing music. He's a blues artist named Kev Mo. And so I grew up in a very musical environment. I grew up playing drums. So I mean, just growing up around my dad, like it was. I don't know if it's necessarily the most normal um, environment for someone my age, like the type of music I was listening to. So that was definitely a big influence and just the fact that for most of my life I was playing drums and not really concerned about making my own music. That whole, you know, that whole thing shaped my view, I guess, you know what I mean? It's coming from a, a little bit of a different place than a, a lot of people, I think. Was there anything else that, that caught your interest before music? I, I know you no, came from it's, always, musical it's always been music. Always, always. Okay. Yeah. All right, bad, bad. So, tell me, like, tell me about it. Since, you know, your whole family's a very musical family, how's, like, how's it like a, 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 a growing up in that type of household? Was there, like, a competition, or was it kind of like, you know, you're one of those people that'll just walk into a, a, a instrument store and like everybody in the family start playing something <laughs> or like singing a song together. Like how was no, no, that family environment? It's not like that. It's more so supportive. You know what I mean? It's more like, man, you this is what you want to do. Like we're all the way supportive. Just make sure you're good at it and keep practicing and you know stay focused in that. But it wasn't. There was no real gotcha. competition. You know. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So tell me. You know. Um, I know you had the, uh, you was down with Surf Club for a minute, you know what I mean? You worked with a lot, you worked with Hit Boy and worked with Chase and a lot of these dudes kind of coming up. So um, tell me about that experience and you know, just how you guys all met and... and well actually the only, I, the only one from Surf Club that I'm really, I'm not, I mean I know Hit from Surf Club and I know Kent and a couple of the other guys, but I really like, I didn't really start working with them until like the HS87 thing happened before I was working with a lot of like local LA artists producing for them like Dom Kennedy and my boy Scheme and Jene Aiko producing for them and then the Surf Club guys came a little later. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright so you know backtrack then tell me about you know producing and making these songs for all these other artists especially um, the kind of sound that you kind of geared yourself towards it's a very LA based I mean it's where you're from you know what I'm saying? Um. I don't know, it kind of just developed naturally, like when I first started making beats, like, uh, like I said, I grew up playing drums, so I actually, it was, there was a rapper named Dev Sound who wanted me to play drums for him, and he was like closer to a lot of the other LA rappers, so when I was playing drums, I was like, man, I'm, I'm starting to make beats, like, let me play you some of my beats, like, and, and, and this and that, and so I did that, and they liked it, and then it kind of grew from there, and so that network built from me, my original thing, playing drums, you know? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, you know, now you're through HS87, you know what I'm saying? You put out one of the most complete projects of the year with, you know, the, um, the uh, All I Ever Dreamed Up right. LP. So, um, talk about that that whole thing and how that really popped up on you guys. 
Um, I mean, working with those guys is really incredible because like, um, I always appreciate working with them because they're they're always just flowing with ideas. You know what I mean? Me, it's a little bit more like I kind of have to like get in the mood and get a little bit reclusive and get weird. And like, I, my friends start to wonder like, what's up with me? Like, man, where's Kevin at? He's being weird. Like, I can't get a hold of him. And so, but with them, they're just like, it's like super energetic. So it's like a little bit different for me, but it's cool because you know, it's a cool change of environment. So. They're just so creative, it's always incredible when we all get together and make music. Now that project had, you know, a lot of heavy hitters on it. It had Ross, it had Raekwon, Robin Thicke, like anybody you could think of. But arguably your song with Hit Boy is probably one of the more uh, standout records on the project. You know, it's getting played a lot on the radio, it's played a lot in the clubs, and you know, the video just came out recently. So um, explain to me how that feels, and you know, especially people starting to notice you for your artistry and you know, everything that you've been doing for a while now. Man, it's, it's really cool. I think more than anything, just the fact that people seem to be enjoying it is what's, and responding to it is what's like fulfilling for me. You know, like the radio, that's amazing. And all that stuff, it's super cool. I would have never expected it, but just the fact that people like it, you know what I mean? People enjoy it and they like listen to it in their regular lives. They don't they don't know me, they don't have anything to do with me. That's, that's the real amazing part for me. Tell me about the making of that song. Like, tell me about your mindset that you was in when you was um, writing those lyrics. <laughs> Man, that song actually, um, that song originally was on my project that I released earlier this year called Rose Gold. And um, I was just making songs. That was, a, uh, that was a project that got me noticed by like Hit Boy and some other people. And that was the kind of thing that kicked everything off for me. And I was just at my house. I had a, a, a studio apartment on Pico in LA and I was doing my thing I would always like start these songs and that was just another one I'd make a beat and then I just felt compelled to write to it and then I started writing to it and I like the words kind of came out I always like mumble a little stuff and then I would I write words and I was like man this is kind of like I'm like should I say that it's kind of like this is kind of sounds kind of crazy but I just went for it and 